Okay, we're going to do a little review of soil stress, and to do that, I want to remind you of how we do it, which is we create a point of interest, the POI, and we find the stress at that at that point of interest. U represents the pore pressure, which is the height of the water in a piezometer above the point of interest times the density of water, 62.4 pounds per cubic foot or 9.8 kilonewtons per cubic meter. Now, um, a piezometer, as I'll illustrate, of course, is, is a tube that is inserted in the ground and water, you know, if the, if the tip of the tube is below the water table, water will go into that tube and will rise in that tube to the level of the water table, which is above the point of interest. The total stress is the stress due to the weight of everything above the point of interest. So above the point of interest, we take the weight of all of the soil above the point of interest. And if there's water, free water above it, we also take that into, we also um, add that in. The effective stress is the essentially the contact stress between the soil particles. And we get the effective stress by taking the total stress and subtracting off the pore pressure. This is our basic effective stress equation that you need to know and um, commit that to memory because you're going to be using it a lot. And then I just want to, if I haven't defined it, the buoyant unit weight, also called the effective unit weight, is calculated, again, we call it gamma B, gamma buoyant, gamma prime, gamma effective, same thing. And it's gamma saturated minus gamma W. That's the definition of the buoyant unit weight or the effective unit weight. Okay, so basic problem. Here's my point of interest. We have sand over clay. The water table is at two feet depth. Uh, five feet is the division between the sand and the clay. The point of interest is at 10 feet. And the uh, base rock is at 15 feet. And we want to find sigma prime at the point of interest. And how do we do that? The easiest way is we set up a table. Depth, sigma, u, sigma prime. And in this case, the depth is 10 feet. The sigma is what? Well, I look above the point of interest. So I'm looking in this region up in here. And in that region, what do I have? I've got, I've got two feet of dry sand. We're taking it as being dry above the water table. Gamma D for the soil is 125. Below the water table, it's, it's saturated. So we take the saturated unit weight, 132 pounds per cubic foot. And then we have five feet. You can see that's five feet because this is 10, this is five of saturated clay again because it's below the water table and it's got a unit weight of 126. So I've got, again, I've got two feet of dry sand, three feet of saturated sand, five feet of saturated clay. So when I get my sig sigma, it's going to be, um, it's going to be, well, let me adjust that a little bit here. That is going to be the um, two feet times the dry density, 125, plus three feet of saturated sand, 132, plus five feet of saturated clay, 126. 
then the pore pressure is going to be this 8 feet times the density of water, which is 62.4. And then I simply take and I subtract the two. So, um, unfortunately, I don't have a number on this, but uh, you can get... Yeah, oops. So, get this number, subtract off the 499, and that's going to give you the answer for this one. Now, um, that gives me my sigma prime, so I'll leave that up to you to do. Um, now, in general, the method is such that, you know, in a, in a sense, we're taking, to get the sigma, you know, we're taking the thickness of the layer times the, the unit weight of the soil, plus the thickness of the next layer times the unit weight of the soil, plus, etc. More and more thicknesses of layers, depending on how deep you are. And the U is simply the height of the water in the piezometer times gamma W, and then we take the, the sigma prime as sigma minus U. Very straightforward, you've done it a million times. Um, here's another one, and in this particular case, the, um, the point of interest is, we're calling it point C, and we have water, gravel, and sand. So we're underwater here. And uh, so this is free water, which we know has a unit weight of 62.4. Everything, the gravel and the sand is saturated because it's below the water level, in this case, up here. And um, these are the saturated unit weights of the sands and gravels. So. I have point C at 48, so what I want you to do is pause the video and do and fill in the sigma, the U, and the sigma prime. Okay, I assume you've done that, and what do we do? We look at it, and we see we've got, what, 15 feet of water, so it's 15 times 62.4. Then I've got Um, 19 feet of gravel. So it's going to be 19 times 125. And then from here to here, I've got 14 feet of sand, saturated sand. So it's going to be, which is 110, so it's going to be plus 14 times 110. I get, I get this number. Here's my piezometer. In this particular case, the piezometer, the water in the piezometer goes all the way to the very top. So it just happens, so because of that, it's going to be 48 times 62.4. Now, if the water doesn't go all the way up to the top, in other words, if the water table is down here, then of course the piezometer level will only go to that height. So don't, <laughs> it's a coincidence that these two numbers are the same, okay? Um, not always equal. Okay, so note that. For some reason, students start to get into the habit of looking at the, um, simply the depth. It's not the depth. It's, uh, it's the depth below. It's the distance below the water table. So, uh, this 48 times 62.4 is 2995. And then what do I do? 4851 minus the 2995 is going to give us the 1856. So, okay. Now, how about stresses from surface loads? So, suppose I, here's my ground surface. Suppose I have a surface load looking like this and what are the added stresses at depth caused by the surface stress. So in other words, I want to, you know, I, I may have 
I have the weight of the soil here. Say that's my point of interest. I have the weight of the soil, and I get that. Well, I, I get the I get the stresses at my point of interest using the weight of the soil above that point, as we just got done doing. But then, if I have a surface stress on top of it, that's going to increase the stress down there. So we want to figure out what is going to be the increase in stress due to the added surface stress. The surface stress could be the weight of the building, could be the load on a footing, something like that. So, um, so for instance, if that surface stress is a thousand pounds per square foot, there's my surface stress and that is, we're going to do this in percentages basically, this is a hundred percent. Uh, at the top here, right at the top, I have the full 1,000, I feel the full 1,000 PSF. Now, if I'm right below the top, then I still feel the full 1,000 PSF. But what happens if I'm below the edge and I'm deeper in the ground? Then I might have, you know, only 60%. And if I'm really deep in the ground, because the weight of this soil is basically, well, one hundred the say was so great... I'm not going to feel this little bit at the or the bit at the top because it's um, it's too deep. So I may have a hundred percent right below the top, right below the surface level. As I go deeper, I'm going to feel less ten percent. And if I'm below the edge, maybe it's sixty percent. So we have to put numbers on it. I don't know whether these are correct or not. I'm just putting these down here, and I didn't give any dimensions or anything like that. But there are ways that we can put numbers on it and figure out explicitly, um, you know, what is the percentage. Now, if I'm way out here, then I'm going to have, it's not, I'm not going to feel this at all, for instance. If I'm point way out here, again, it probably would be 0% because I'm not going to feel this stress way over here if I'm way over, if I'm way over here. So, uh, we are going to have regions of zero stress. Now, the solutions are in the form of the charts, typically. And, you know, on the PE exam, they can give you a chart, then you should use it. There are also approximate solutions. And so I'll explain the approximate solutions as well as the, uh, the charts. This is the approximate solution. And I have not shown this in my classes, but this is one way to get an approximate value without going into a chart. So sometimes you just don't have the charts with you and you need an answer and you can use this method. Uh, how does it work? Well, uh, first let me just say it's the average stress below a surface load. So um, when you've done this before, we would break out you know, the stress below the center, the stress below the edge, the stress below a corner we would separate those out. And um, this particular method is basically the average of the center, the aver <laughs> average of the center, edge, and corner. So it's none of them. It's a rough average of all of them. So it's not, gonna, not going to be as high as the center. It's not going to be as low as the corner. Um, it's going to come in much closer to, you know, the the edge stress, which is in between. How do we compute this? Well, it's pretty straightforward. We envision that um, that, it, uh, that we apply, well, we apply this, the load at the surface, and we envision that the load spreads out at a rate at a, rate of 2 to 1 going down. So the way this works out, um, if I'm down 4 feet, for instance, then if I follow the lines down at this slope, I'm going to end up that this distance is 9 feet. And, um, and so the shortcut method is that this in plan view becomes a nine by nine and this in plan view is a five by five. 
So what we're doing is we're spreading the load out. Same weight, same W here, basically, but we're spreading it out so that um, uh, the stress is reduced as we get deeper and deeper in the ground. Now, if I get the nine feet here, I have the five foot there, then in plan view, I would look at this as being a five by five. And then this is going to be a nine by nine. And the areas, I have five squared for the first one, five by five, nine squared, nine by nine for the second one. And if I multiply that by, by Q, my surface stress, Q, then I'm going to get, uh, this becomes 0 0.309, so about 30%, Q at the point of interest. So that says that the, uh, the increase, well, the increase in normal stress due, due to the application of this surface stress, the increase is 30.9% of the surface stress. So, um, if this is, is 3000 PSF, then then we get point, we get the point three oh nine times the Q, which is 3,000, and we get 918 for our, for our point of interest. So at the t that's quite a drop-off. We have 918 at my point of interest. If I had been under the ground surface, then I would get the full 100%. 100%. I'd get the full 3,000. So I get the full 3,000 up here, but if I look down here, I'm only going to get 918. So 1,000, roughly. We're going to use this chart as well, because on the PE exam, sometimes they will give you a chart. So if they do give you a chart, you need to use it. They're sort of telling you you've got to use this chart. So the approximate method is not going to be accurate enough. It's too approximate. Now, um, so we can look at this. This is for a circular plan, like maybe a water tank or something like that, an oil tank, or, you know, just a round footing. Um, and our goal is to get this influence value. The influence value is, is like our percent. <laughs> so uh, that's what we want to get. And um, if we look at the other axis, we can see the other axis is Z over R. And um, I'm also going to point out this is values of X over R. So we have these numbers here. They represent X over R. Well, what are X and what are R and all that? Well, remember, this is a circular footprint. For a circular footprint, then what? I know the diameter is 2R. So um, R, this is, like I say, it's, this is for a circular surface load, and R is simply the radius of our circular, <laughs> circular uh, surface load. And um, I'm looking at my point of interest. Now, this little diagram shows us the definition. Here's my point of interest over here, and I notice that X and Z are in here. X is the distance, this is the center line, the distance horizontally from the center line, our, my point of interest is, and um, Z is simply the depth. So let's just take a look at how to use it. So I have my plan view, I have my circular shape, could be a tank, something like that. I've got the points that I'm interested in, which is A, B, and C, 
and the A, B, and C. Well, B is below the edge, the A is below the center. And uh, to get the C, we we're specifying it's got to be 20 feet outside of the edge. And the, um, the Q we use here is 2,000 PSF. Um, okay, so let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at this point of interest right here. We've got, it's at a depth of 40 feet, and it's below the center. So I want to get my x, my z, my x over r, my z over r. And so if I'm going down the center, oops, if I'm going down the center, that means that my x is zero. In other words, it's right down the center, which is going to indicate that you know, I'm right, right down here. So the x is, is zero. And the z, there's my z there. In this case, the z is 40 feet. You can see the depth below the surface. So I have my x is zero because it's below the center. And my z is 40 feet. That means my x over r, all you have to do is plug in your value of r, which um, you know we can see is 40 feet. And um, we could, you know, from the chart we get that, um, well, I'm down the center here. That means my x is 0. So x over r is going to be 0. No way you can get around that. And then my z over r. My z is 40, my r, it happens by accident, happens to be 40 also, so it's a little bit of a coincidence. And my z over r is 1. So I have these two values. I have my value for x over r and z over r. x over r is 0, z over r is 1. And um, how do I get the, um, the influence factor? Well, I go back into this chart. And uh, I have x over r0, zero, z over r1. And so I'm looking here for my values of x over r. And if I look closely enough, I'll see that, that um, to get 0, so I get my x over r was 0. Well, where is it? I mean, I'm on this line. Oops. I'm on this line right there. It's x over r equals 0. And my z over so, oops, z over r is one. So I'm on this curve here. My z over r is here. Z over r is one, which is over here, and that's approximately um, on that line right there, and. Um, Oops. And so I can read my influence value. And how do I read it? So um, the uh, um, x over r, 0, 0 over r, 1, <laughs> so too many numbers here. 0, 1. And I can get so I'm this point, and then I read off my influence value, I can go up or I can go down, doesn't matter. But it's about 0.75, there's my influence value, so it's about 0.75 for that. So, um, my I, for some reason it's not there, is at point seven five here. So you do the other ones.
pause the video here now that I've shown you how to do this, you do B and C. So B is there, C is there. So you they're defined. And uh, you can see B is at 60 and C is at 20. And B is below the edge. C is 20 foot outside of the edge. And so your job is to get this number by filling in all of these other ones. Okay, so um, you get the uh, X is 40, Z is 60, X is 60, um, Z is 20, and those come from, maybe I'll just, uh, how do we get those that came directly from this? And um, so um, we're measuring, remember, remember, we're measuring from the center, so um, the X is measured outward from the center. And that is why the X value for B is 40 feet. And the X value for C is, you know, all the way to here. And that distance is 60 feet. So um, that gives me my X value. And then, of course, the Z value is simply the, the vertical distance to each point. And then, so you can all get the... X over R and Z over R, um, given the R is 40 feet. And um, now we're going to take these values. X over R is 1. X over R is 1.5. If I go into my chart, so I've got, I'm look, looking at my X over R here. And that's 1. So I'm going to be on this curve. And... Um, My z over r is 1.5. So I find my point, and then, so it's right there. I can read off. It's easier to go to the top because it's closer. And I'm going to get between 0.2 and 0.3. Watch, watch this. Uh, watch out for this, the way this is read. So that's 0.2. That's 0.3. It oh, looks closer to 0.28 or 0.27, something like that. For the other point... I'm at an X over R of 1.5, so I'm on this curve, and then um, my Z over R is 0.5, so I'm here, and uh, so that's where it intersects, that curve intersects that line, and then I'm, I read off my influence factor of 0.04. So, um, Okay, I took 0.26 and 0.04. Okay, close enough. It's approximate. And um, those are my influence values. I multiply them by 2,000, and I get these values. So that's how you use that chart. And notice that this shows us that this chart is for a circular uh, surface load, circular shape surface load. All right, I'm going to pause there.